Cluster tables are handy for customer-based customization in ECC. Will they be available in S4 or will I have to do my own version of them? Good. Um, First. It's a good question. In S4, you no longer have cluster tables and you no longer have pool tables. Cluster tables and pool tables, now we're going back to 1992 again, uh, they were things originally uh, invented by SAP to work around certain limitations of the database systems as they then were. Like for instance, just an example, uh, Oracle but at that time, which was Oracle perhaps really six, uh, had a limitation on 1500 tables maximum in a database. Now, if you know SAP, it's got quite a bit more tables than 1500, even in its earliest versions. So what did SAP come up with to, to work around that? That was a concept of pool tables where many small, custom, mainly customizing tables are simply grouped to one physical database table. Clusters were a different invention, more for performance reasons, where you actually keep a master table and its dependent detail records uh, together in one physical structure so that the uh, starting with the master record, you can access the detail records uh, much more uh, easily and much faster. In later releases of NetWeaver, those tables still exist, although really they would no longer be needed. And in S4 and in HANA, they've, completely, they've been abolished completely. Uh, so what will happen during the migration is a process called declustering for clusters and depooling for pool tables, where those tables will be uh, will be converted into transparent tables. A transparent table is simply a database table where the, the, the structure in SAP corresponds to the structure in the database. Now, pool tables are not really a big problem most of the time, but cluster tables can be and in most cases are humongous. Uh, there are a few clusters like RFBLG, the, the accounting cluster, CDCLS, the change document cluster. Those tables can really be gigantic. They are, in many, many cases, they are among, almost always among the largest tables in the entire database. Yes. Now, before the conversion, you have to run a tool which will actually inspect the pools and the clusters for possible inconsistencies. Because those inconsistencies, um, if, if they show up during the actual conversion uh, where the cluster table is changed to a transparent table, if they show up, then they would cause a corruption, they, they would cause a failure of the migration. So those tools have to run beforehand and you must use the, the results of those tools to fix any inconsistencies if, they, if any exist. Uh, again, uh, and that's one of the reasons why I say they always take your time and run the process repeatedly uh, because of the size of those cluster tables, that process, that report can take a lot of time. Uh, we're talking, in the worst case, we're talking days. Um, well, so make sure that you run that process on a copy of your production or clo as, as closely um, a copy of your production system your production data as possible so that you know a how long it's going to take and b whether there are any inconsistencies 